for picking it up again. You don't know what you're missing. This is one of my I favorite always, board games. I always point to this one when I want to make the point of why good writing is so much more important than art to, an, uh, to a visual novel. Now, you know what? Speaking of goofy puns and stuff, let's talk about goofy puns. All right, so this game just came out uh, not too long ago. Uh, it is about you getting involved with a Yakuza group where the guys are all nicknamed the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and the Wizard. Get it? Oz Mafia? No, I've only played a, <laughs> I've only played a little bit of this one, uh, but one of the main gimmicks of this is that when you are going down a certain guy's route, at some point you will be given the option to switch routes. There are rival rings. Yes. So, if you are going down person A's path, you can suddenly jump to another guy and get a different ending for that guy than you would if you had just gone through his path at the beginning. So you get tons of drama, and speaking of tons of drama oh, and hurt feelings... Oh, oh sad. Uh, so this <laughs> You can game, tell the depressing games because every no. time we put it up we hear, oh. <laughs> Okay, now in this game, at the beginning, you wake up in hammer space, and this little, like, Twinkie fairy dude says, Hey, I accidentally destroyed your brain. Um, all of these portals lead to different universes. Do you want to go in one? So and have. then, depending on which uh, portal you choose, you end up in one of four alternate universes where the entire game's plot is completely different. So, and now the characters are all the same, but their personalities and relationships to you might be different. Like, in one route, you're dating a dude. In another route, that same dude is your best friend. In another route, that same dude is your brother. <laughs> that same huh? dude is also probably the worst dude in this game. <laughs> Uh, okay, now this one is another one I haven't played much of, but we need to mention League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, the dating sim. First, first let me talk about, let, let me talk about something that nobody owns called a PlayStation Vita. A what? <laughs> uh, because the Vita is so huge in Japan, a disturbing number of the games on this list are Vita exclusive. It makes me sad. Including this one. Yes, uh, like the next four games we're going to talk about are Vita exclusive because uh, Axis and Idea Factory seem to only want to license Vita games and it, it makes me suffer. And it's we're hoping eventually some of them get a Steam release. But we'll see. Let's talk about Nord 9. Now the interesting thing about Nord 9 uh, is in addition to uh, different routes, different boys to pick, you can pick one of three female characters to be. So you can be like the spunky girl, the wavy girl, the senpai, and each of them has a different selection of guys you can date and a different perspective on this mystery. Now, are you cool if I talk about the next three? Because you don't really know about these three. Well, I'll, the only thing I know about the next one is the hilariously unfortunate title. Oh, this is a bad title. Period Q. <laughs> like your vegan friends trying to sell you on, it's called a period cube. No, yeah. Uh, but this one, the, uh, in this one, you decide that, uh, well, your older brother has gone missing and you decide to play an MMO to find him, but then you get trapped inside the MMO. So yeah, this is Sword Art Mojave. Uh, but when you get transferred into the game, you become like the main powerful item. And so all of the guys are like, wait, you're the magic glowing girl sword. I want to own you. And that is apparently where the romance springs from. Uh, and then we have uh, this one. Hold on, give me a sec. Da 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 da. I love when my laptop uh, is working. Bad Apple Wars, which is set in hell, and which <laughs> just happens to, of course, be high school. Fairly accurate. Uh, yes, in this one, you're in a high school in purgatory, and the disciplinary committee is fighting a delinquent group called the Bad Apples, and you pick which side you're on, and then if you win, you will get to have another chance of life, and also make out with one of these dudes. Now, one thing I wanted to point out with this is just from the very little snippets of promo art we've seen, this looks really angsty. This looks like it's going to be kind of an amnesia type of deal. Mm. Although I say that, but this next one really looks like amnesia. Oh, Lord. Okay, so, uh... You are a police detective, and one day you wake up and find that some crazy person has put, like, a poison death collar on you. Uh. And then you meet five crazy dudes who are all ex-cops who say, we think you are the important clue. 
You are now a member of our team. You can't say no. And all I can see looking for all the promo art I've seen is like angst, angst, bondage, angst. Probably some sort of yandere thing going on. <laughs> this one's just going to be like a whole bunch of drama. And kid will love it. That's harsh. Uh, now moving on from these, we're going to talk about games that we do not have to wait for the translation. Hooray, because they are originally developed in the Ooh. language of English. Uh, original Ooh. English language visual novels or elements. Uh, now I know if you go to this con, there's a lot of panels uh, regarding something called Renpa. Uh, actually, Renpa? one of the, uh, Tom, I think, the guy who, uh, yeah, one of mostly the developed of Renpa, Renpa uh, was here on Saturday, I believe. Uh, but this is a freeware game development engine designed around Python, where even if you don't have a lot of programming experience, you can put together a functional visual novel. Uh, and we're, and uh, one company who do that a lot uh, is a company that uh, you also may know and well from being in Dallas, Sake Visual. Uh, they have a booth in the dealer's room if you want to go there and buy all of the things that they have made because they're all awesome. Uh, this now this is the second ever Otome game I ever played. Uh, the first was the Newgrounds Naruto dating sim, which will not be in this panel. <laughs> Uh, but this game is very short, it's very simple, but it's actually very polished, and it costs zero dollars. It is a free Otome game, it is a great place to start if you're new to Otome games, or you're trying to get someone addicted to them. Now, uh, Because you're a mean friend. After this, uh, Sake Visual came out with a series of detective novels, uh, Jisei, Kansei, and Yosei, which they sold for money, and they used the money that they earned from those sales to create something really amazing. Backstage Pass uh, <laughs> might be the only AAA English language visual novel ever released. Just, it quick, has... just quick, has anyone at this con not heard of this yet? Please, but oh, you just bought it. Oh, yes. you are lucky if you just bought this game. Okay, okay. this game stars. Uh, first off, it has a ton of professional voice actors: uh, Austin Tindall, Micah Solisud, Ian Sinclair, Monica ah. Vial, Chris Sabat, Joel McDonald, and uh, Erica Mendez and Sarah Williams. Uh, so yeah, professional voice acting. You have a animated opening and closing sequence, both made by Studio Dean. And yes. this game is massive. This game has about 16 endings. Kid I have only game. gotten 13 of those, and I have a playtime of something like 65 hours. Holy crud. So this is game a, is massive. It is a very thorough, very in-depth, stat-raising dating game uh, with several hidden secret routes. And, uh, and you can also make cupcakes. Yes, you can make cupcakes. Cupcakes! Okay, real quick, which one is your favorite? Uh, character or cupcake? <laughs> Can we refer to all the show as cupcakes now? Oh, <laughs> cupcakes, it's Matthew. <laughs> Matthew is a cupcake. See, I would actually go, I would probably go for Ian Sinclair playing Benedict Cumberbatch. Ian Sinclair! Here's the thing about Matthew. Okay, he, Matthew is the dude at the top left, who is the, you know, you know, stoic blonde with the body of a Greek Adonis. And he's Good a lucrative team. model, so you think that he's going to be the, uh, you know, oh, I could so have fancy. I could have any girl in the world, but of course I'll settle for you type of douchebag. Yeah. But then when you actually talk to him, he turns out to be extremely awkward around women and one of the shyest cinnamon rolls you have ever met. <laughs> And you're just like, oh, silly baby. <laughs> uh, now, we didn't have time to close ship for this cycle, right? Oh, we have a ton of time for this panel. All right, let's talk about Date Warp. Now, this one is a little less can, polished. Can I talk about the plot of this one? Uh, hold on. It's a little less polished in terms of its art style. And if you do look this game up on Steam, some of the CGs they have as previews look kind of... Uh, but uh, the writing of this game and the mechanics are great. So now, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. So here is the plot of Date Warp. All right, so you have two young lovebirds named Brad and Janet. <laughs> Their car breaks down in the rain, and they have to walk through the woods until they find a mansion completely lit up in the middle of nowhere. But it's Yes, so even the title is a reference to Rocky Horror. <laughs> Well, they find tons of the showmen, so I guess it's a good trade-off. 
Um, this game is another one where the writing is really, really good compared to the artwork, like you said. Yeah, uh, it's difficult to talk about the plot of this game because after your first, like, maybe ten minutes, uh, actually about eight minutes into this game, you get your first massive plot twist, which comes out of nowhere and it is wonderful. Oh, but here's the gameplay stuff. Yeah, each time you want to make a choice in this game, you have to play Pipe Dream. So you have the energy flowing from the source, and you have to twist the wires until the energy is flowing into the choice you want to make. And uh, this, it's, it's pretty easy most of the time. Uh, but Kid was pretty drunk the first time she played this. <laughs> so she started being, having to call me over to solve every single one of these. <laughs> uh, but luckily, after you solve it the first time, you get that lovely little skip puzzle button at the bottom, uh, which means that after subsequent playthroughs, uh, it's not nearly as difficult. And you can be as drunk as you want. <laughs> We do not, we do not we do condone not condone drinking while playing visual novels. Uh, okay, now this one is one that is definitely pretty and very, very unique. Uh, Cinders has 128 possible endings. Holy crud. Uh, the reason for this is, well, first off, it's, it's a feminist Cinderella. And you have to figure out one of four main ways that Cinders will escape from her horrible life and stepmother. Uh, you can either marry the prince and become queen, uh, you can run out of town and become a vagabond, uh, you can take over your family's fortune and become like a rich heiress. Or you can attempt to do one of the three, fail miserably, and get executed. Oh! But then within those four ending archetypes, there are tons of small variable factors considering who your friends are, your allies, and what your personality is. So, for example, who you run out of town with. Uh, or if you marry the prince. Yeah, you could marry the prince.